AC electric fields can be measured reference to ground or ungrounded potential free. Note that if you are only taking AC magnetic field strength measurements, a ground connection is not required. Unless you are using a meter specifically designed to measure AC electric fields without a ground connection, such as an NFA 1000, we recommend grounding your Gigahertz Solutions ME series meter for best results. In this video, we'll be using an ME 3951A EMF meter. A detailed technical and instructional video for this meter is available on the Safe Living Technologies website at slt.co. All low-frequency meters sold by Safe Living Technologies include a grounding cable and more advanced meters include a grounding clamp. A proper connection to a reliable ground is essential for accurate measurement with these meters. It is also important to check for any voltage potential differences that may exist between these connection points. First, let's look at the three options you can use to ground the meter. The first and easiest way is to connect your meter to an electrical ground with a ground plug adapter shown here. Notice that the only pin used is this conductive ground pin. It connects to the AC outlet's ground pin as shown here. Confirm your home is wired correctly by using a basic outlet tester. This tester shows correct wiring with these lights. Both the ground plug adapter and this wiring tester are available from Safe Living Technologies. Using the included cable, connect the meter to this adapter as shown. The next option is a copper water pipe found under a sink or in your basement. If the copper isn't clean, Use a bit of steel wool to remove the oxidation, dirt buildup, or varnished coating that may be on the pipe. Using the included cable and clamp, connect the meter to this part of the pipe. Wiggling the clamp like this will also help for a good connection. The third option is to use your own ground rod. This is done by simply inserting a conductive rod into the wet ground of a garden. The ground cable is then attached, as shown. All three methods may be used as a ground connection for your meter. However, it is important to know that voltage potential differences may exist between these points. This can be caused by many different variables. Shown here is a typical electrical panel in a house. It is grounded in two places. The system ground, shown here, connects to 8-foot grounding rods located in the soil outside of your house and the equipment ground is connected to the water pipe. Because of a potential voltage difference between these points, readings reference to ground can vary depending on your ground connection point. The readings can also vary depending on the location of the AC outlet used. This is especially important to know at lower measurement ranges and body voltage measurements. In any case, only the highest readings should be used when evaluating your results. The X, Y, and Z axis terminology used refer to spatial orientations shown here. The X axis, the Y axis, which is 90 degrees from the X, and the vertical Z axis. Note that unless you are using a three-dimensional meter, such as an NFA 1000, all electric field measurements must be made on each X, Y, and Z axis separately. Depending on the source position and type of appliance, the radiation field patterns may be present in many directions at the same time. After you have chosen a suitable ground connection, proceed with your readings as follows. In the area of concern, hold the meter close to your body as shown here. Notice that the grounding cable is routed down and away from the meter. Allow your hand to come in contact with any of the exposed ground connections on the side of the meter. While measuring, be sure that the person using the meter and anyone else present is located behind the meter. Hold the meter in the X position and log the reading. Then hold the meter in the Y position, log the reading, and finally the Z position. If there is only one specific value or dominant axis, you can simply use that value alone 
Otherwise, calculate the total exposure value by using the following vectorial addition formula. The square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. This is where a three-dimensional meter, such as the NFA 1000, saves time and increases accuracy because all three axes are measured and calculated at the same time without moving the meter. No manual calculations are required, and the total exposure reading may be read directly from the display. If you do not have a reliable ground connection available, measurements must then be done with the following method known as potential free or floating measurements. The individual axis reading and calculations procedure are done as before, but this time it is extremely important to keep the meter at least 4 inches away from any conductive surfaces and to keep your body at least 5 feet away. To assist with this, use the following accessories. A PM1 or PM5 for the ME series of meters, and a PM1 or PM5S for the NFA series of meters. Again, these readings are known as potential free or floating. Once you have determined the highest readings, compare them to the latest building biology guidelines. Currently, SBM 2008 is the most recent building biology standard. Notice that the AC electric field guidelines are given in two categories, potential free or floating, and referenced to a grounded connection. A reasonable goal after mitigation would be to have levels reduced to the slight concern level as shown below. For more detailed information about the meter used in this video and other available models such as the NFA 1000, please visit the Safe Living Technologies website at slt.co.